Happy birthday. Thank you. I should explain this, by the way. I thought I would get something really special this year. And there's these places in Midtown you never hear about. At least I never did. There's shops, right? Stores, like to sell things. But like where I found this thing, all they sell there is ancient Chinese treasures. And you have to make an appointment to even get in the place. So you're like the only customer. It's incredible. You get inside and you're in a different world. It's completely quiet. You can't hear sounds from the street. All the stuff is under glass cases like museum now. That's what I call shopping. Do you like it? It's beautiful. Isn't it nice? Genuine Ming Dynasty. There's only about 20 of them in the world. That's what the lady said. They were for the royal family. That's why I thought it was a nice idea. What they would do is if the emperor had a son who died before he was old enough to rule, they would cremate the body and put the ashes in that hole in the back, and then they bury the whole works. I guess that's why they're so rare, but listen to this. This is the great part. It's shaped like a horse because they had this belief that the horse would take the child's spirit on a ride where it would see its whole life passing by. The life that it would have had if it didn't die. In that way, it could go to its final resting place in peace. At least, that's what the lady explained. I wanted to get something really special this year and I think I got a pretty good deal on it. They were asking 97,000 for it, but I got them down to 93. Not bad still, Paul? I had to sell the business. All the editing machines. Paul. Office equipment, at least on the building. Cash in my stocks and take out all my savings, Paul. but I finally scraped it all together. I, I just thought it was worth it. We need something in this apartment for all the ashes. The unborn embryos. Isn't that what they do when they take them out? Don't they burn them? Or did you have one of those guys that just pops in a baggie and into the trash can? Paul, is this for real? Is what for real? This. Oh yeah. That's for real. I thought you meant the embryo and I was gonna ask you about that because it seems to have slipped your mind. Who told you? Selena. Is that what's important? Who told me? It wasn't you, that's for sure. It's a pretty goddamn weird thing to find out from someone else that your wife has an abortion six months ago and doesn't even bother to tell you about it. I guess I must just be one of those naturally curious people because when I found out, it made me want to know all kinds of things, Susan. Like what the fuck's been going on in our life? All these wonderful little human dramas happening under my nose and I didn't know a thing about it. Was it mine? Yes. Why didn't you say something? Paul, oh, I don't know. I really don't know. I meant to, I wanted to. I see, anything else? Or is that sort of the full explanation? Paul, I don't know anything else. It's very illuminating. You know, it really makes me feel like this is something we can work out. I, I mean, what are we, Susan? Remind me, because it's getting kind of vague in my mind. Are we married? Something like that? Is there some kind of unique relationship here? Something that might be worth looking into? Are you saying you didn't tell me because it isn't an interesting fact? Or it's just not something very important for me to know about? Or it's an unpleasant topic of conversation? Or it's just none of my business? I mean, what is this shit? Stop it! It hurts, Susan. It just hurts. All this silence between us, all this unknown stuff. You know how much I want a kid, you know that. I mean, what have I been doing for the past three years? Running my ass off, building a business, working 12 hours a day. Am I supposed to have been doing that for the deep satisfaction it gave me? Do you think I'm a mental defective or something? You know, at the very worst, I thought this was all some kind of weird test I was going through. Some bizarre nest building ritual to prove that I was worthy of fertilizing your egg. That was the only way I could look at it and still feel marginally sane. Are you saying you did everything you did so I'd let you make a baby? Is that what you're saying? Because if it is, well, it's nice to know what you're keeping me around for. Thank you. Susan, you know that's not what I meant. All I know is it's a pretty shitty thing to lay on me. 
Nobody forced you to do anything you didn't want to do. So what's this thing like it's all been some kind of terrible ordeal? Jesus, Paul. What's the matter with you? If you're allowed to enjoy it, you know. There's no law that says you have to feel terrible about it. You earned it, for God's sake. You deserve it, and I'm proud of you. I just want to see you happy with it. Aha. Uh -huh. So that's why you had the abortion. That's why you didn't tell me. You wanted me to be happy. Gee, you were doing it all for me. Why, why didn't I see it that way? We really are wonderful people, aren't we, Susan? We just do everything for each other. Right. I didn't tell you. But I was wrong. Mea culpa. What can I say, Paul? I'm sorry. Because I am. But that doesn't have very much to do with anything right now, does it? But why? Why? Babe, you don't get a whole lot of time to think about what you should do when there's this thing growing inside you and it's not getting any smaller. And the more time you take to think things over, the less small it's getting. It's not like I just popped down to the friendly neighborhood abortionist. I did think it over just a little bit before I went through with it. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I like what we have. I guess I just didn't want anything to change at all. And telling me would have changed it all? I don't know, wouldn't it? Well, if it would have, then what the hell do we have that's so great? So now we have nothing. Well, tell me, Susan, what do we have? Everything you've done, everything I've done, everything we've got, tell it's me what all we nothing. Have. None of it means anything to you? Thank God, Paul, how you must be suffering. Oh, we really hate each other, don't we? If I don't hate you. I just don't understand why we always make everything so complicated for each other. Hasn't this been a good time? I mean, I was under the impression we were more or less happy. In fact, I was even thinking that if Deb and Francine get divorced, we'd be the longest couple of all our friends. Except for Doug and Mariah doesn't count they're not married. I don't know what it is, Susan. Yes, I want all this. Sometimes. But sometimes, I I'm really amazed it's me doing all this. You know, there's been whole weeks when I went around thinking, hey, this is a pretty good deal. I I'm, I'm happy. I, I mean, this is it, right? <laughs> this must be it. I, I must be happy. And then one day I'll come home. I'll go in there, try to get comfortable, read or something. And for some reason, I just can't concentrate. Try to watch TV. I, I can't even manage that. So I start walking around the apartment and I see all this stuff we have. And I start thinking about what we do to get it. You pick up a little box and go click. I tape pieces of film together. Presto, we have everything we want. We're so good at doing these little things that make us able to have all this stuff. But we can't seem to get it together to have one stupid little baby. Us. The two of us, together. Doesn't that ever seem strange to you? Sort of intuitively wrong? Uh, absurd. Something like that. No, Paul, I'm sorry. It doesn't. The only thing I find strange is how I keep feeling like I have to have a baby to be enough for you. I mean, what happens if I decide that a baby isn't as important to me as a lot of other things? What happens if I decide that all I want is you? And our life together, and our work. I mean, couldn't that be enough, Paul? Paul. Paul, answer me. Am I enough for you without a baby? I don't know. <laughs> and you wonder why I couldn't tell you? I don't know. Why didn't you say something before this? Maybe I didn't want to know what I just found out. Well, Paul, I'm sorry you're feeling so badly about your accomplishments because I'm feeling pretty good about mine. And I can't see any reason why I shouldn't. But Doug starts doing well and you laugh about it. You think it's funny. You do well and suddenly it's wrong. I don't get it. You can't have it always, babe. We're not children anymore. You have what you have. If you want it, keep it and stop making excuses for it. And if you want to be a saint, then go back and dig outhouses for the Niglali. 
Oh boy. What? We're in a lot of trouble, aren't we? I don't know. I guess we are. So now what? No. Should we even be talking about this now? No. I want to go out and have a great time with Ben and Janice and Phil. Fine, talk. What are we going to do? I don't know. We're going to have to do something, aren't we? Like a divorce, you mean? Is that what you want? Do you? I hadn't exactly thought a whole lot about it, not today. Are you serious? I mean, isn't that what's going on here? Can you think of anything else we could do? Happy birthday. I meant it to hurt, Susan. Yes. We'll call a lawyer in the morning. Lawyer. Okay. Fine. Jesus. <laughs>